We're losing light in Yellowstone National Park, trying to get into position to see an animal that has captured people's imaginations and changed nearly the entire ecosystem of the park. There's a bison which died several uh, hundred yards from here along a little uh, river. At night, the wolves are going to come and feed on it. Do they always feed around this time? Yep. This is about the time they come out. Doug Smith is the wildlife biologist in charge of the wolf reintroduction project. We hunker down in the sagebrush for about 30 more minutes, then spot movement in the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, great. You're officially a wolf watcher now. <laughs> and uh, is that your first wolf? Yeah, that is. OK, great. That we're actually seeing wolves here is something that just 15 years ago seemed impossible. Viewed as both pests and vicious predators, wolves were the target of a government-sponsored extermination campaign at the beginning of the 20th century. Along the way, they were completely eliminated from the park. But public perception and biological appreciation for the wolf began to change in the 1980s. Bison and elk populations exploded because there were no natural predator like the wolf to keep their numbers down. In 1995, after a pitched battle with a nearby ranching community who were afraid wolves would kill their livestock, Doug Smith transplanted the first wolves back into Yellowstone. The reintroduction is now considered one of the greatest conservation success stories in the past few decades. What do you think it is about wolves that surprised people, surprised everyone here, just how adaptive they are? Yeah, I think so. You know, they just fell right back into their old role, even though they had been missing for 70 years. Mm -hmm. And that role, the role of just one single species, has profoundly altered Yellowstone's entire ecosystem. It's what scientists call a trophic cascade, when one animal, usually a top predator, has a cascading top-down effect on different levels of the food chain. It's almost a paint-by-numbers illustration of how a healthy ecosystem should work. It starts with the wolf's favorite prey, elk. And I was circling four wolves from his observation plane earlier in the week, Doug saw wolves surround and kill a bull elk. He takes us into the shallow draw where he thinks we'll find the carcass. There he is. There's virtually nothing left. And so he probably died right here. So these bones all around here, there's leg bones here, there's leg bones up there, were done by wolves, bears, coyotes, what we call the scavenger community. I have not seen that beetle but it doesn't stop with the big animals. A single wolf kill means even the little ones eat too. Even things like these little beetles, these little bugs here. Yep. We've actually documented uh, a team of researchers in, that work with us, hundreds of different species of beetles that use wolf kills. We estimate just a ballpark figure. You know, 2,000 elk are hitting the ground a year in this part of Yellowstone due to about seven wolf packs. So you add all that up for the vertebrate scavengers, the invertebrate scavengers, these bugs, that becomes a real direct effect of wolf killing in, in terms of the big picture of ecosystems that wasn't taking place before wolves got here. That trophic 